Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to open up and lead open up with a song. Amen. Amen. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands, as we lift our hearts, as we offer up this praise unto your name. Welcome. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this place. Broken vessel, you desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. Welcome again. Well, into this place Welcome into this broken vessel You desire to abide in the praises of your people So we lift our hands as we lift our hearts we offer up this praise unto your name. Creation declares the glory. Creation declares your glory. And the universe declares your majesty. And the universe declares your majesty. Yes, you and you choose to abide. In the praises of your people, so we lift our hands, as we lift our hearts, as we offer up this praise unto your name. Creation declares your glory. Universe declares your majesty. And the universe declares your majesty. Yet you choose to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up. This praise unto Everyone please your stand. Name. Everyone please stand. Welcome. Hallelujah. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide. In the praises of your people, so we lift our hands, and we lift our hearts, as we offer up this praise unto your name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Everyone, please stand for prayer as we go before yeah. the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Our heads bowed, eyes closed. Dear Lord Jesus, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for this place, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for this place that we can come to, Lord God, and praise you, Lord God. And thank you, Lord God, for all the things that you have done for us, Lord God. Lord, you take care of us. You've done so much for us throughout our life, Lord God, and we're just grateful, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God, for what you've done. Lord, we ask that you, Lord, bless each and every person that is here, Lord God. 
Bless the people that are on the way, Lord God. Bless this service, Lord God. You, let someone Lord. get what get, let everyone get whatever they need, Lord God, Thank out of this Jesus. service, Lord God. Touch each and every person here, Lord God. Each and every passerby, Lord God, that walks by these doors. Touch them, check out their hearts, Lord God, for them to come in, Lord God, and hear what you have to say, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we ask you, Lord, bless each and every person working today from the booth, Lord God, to the pastor, Lord God. We ask that you have your way. Lord, we love you, thank you, and praise you in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to have a scripture. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> um, let's go to 1 Peter <laughs> uh, chapter 3, verse 8. Um, eight and nine, eight and nine, amen. amen. You have to say amen. Amen. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren. Be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise. Bless knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Amen, amen, amen. 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 At this time, we, are, we will hear from our praise team, amen? amen. Hallelujah. You, the Jesus. Lord is in this place. Amen. Yes, he is. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come and worship. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come and worship. The Lord is in this place. He is in this place. This place. The Lord is in this place. He is in this place. This place. Come and worship. The Lord is in this place. The Lord. Is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come and worship. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Worship the Lord is in this place. He is in this place. This place. Come and worship the Lord is in this place. He is in this. This place, come and worship, the Lord is in this 
belongs to you.
offering time. Amen. Amen. It's offering time. Amen. Church of Apostolicity, you know your obligations. Amen. Let's stay to it. Amen. And if you don't have any money on you, we have the ability to swipe your cards. Amen. 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 Don't do your best. Do what's right. And do give the right offering. Amen. Amen. Let's be a blessing to the house of God. Amen. Because God deserve our all. Amen. He deserve our all. Amen. So I'm going to leave you in the hands of our ushers and our song leaders. Every day with Jesus Sweeter than the day before Every day with Jesus, I love Him more and more. Jesus saves and He keeps me. He's the one that I adore. Every day with Jesus. Everyone, please stand. Follow the rest of your ushers in the rear. Everyone, please stand. Sweeter, sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love Him more and more. Jesus. 
Jesus, sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love Him more and more. Jesus saves and He keeps me. He's the one that I adore. I've got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. This means this means war. This means war. This means this means war. I got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter. The attack, I won't turn back. This means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. I plead the blood. I plead. I plead the blood. There's power in the blood. I plead. I plead the blood. This means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. Been the storm and the rain. But the blood still stays the same. Yeah. Whatever's going wrong, right. my war clothes are on. Yeah. I might be in a daze, yeah. but you can't have my praise. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. 
means. This means blood. I plead the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. There's power in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. There's healing in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. There's power in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. This means. This means blood. This means this means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. I've been in the storm and the rain, but the blood still stays the same. Whatever's going wrong, uh -huh. my war clothes are on. I might be in the days. But you can't have my praise No matter the attack I won't turn back This means war This means This means war This means This means war This means This means war You can't have my family. You can't have my increase. You can't have my breakthrough. You can't have my. You can't have my. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't oh, I need. I need the blood. There's power in the blood. I need. I need the blood. There's healing in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. There's power in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. This means, this means war. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. This means war. Yes. This means war. One thing about being saved is war. We're in a war. And I think a lot of times people don't get that. And that's why so many people are losing the war. Amen. Because they don't realize they're in a war. The devil don't like us. The devil don't like us, y'all. Don't, don't think that. He, he works for us, but he doesn't like us. Amen. Hopefully I can explain that today. But praise the Lord, everybody. God is good. And I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. Let's open our Bibles and go to chapter 17 of the book of Acts. The book of Acts. If you don't have a Bible, I think we might have some left. Amen. Or if you sit next to someone that don't have a Bible, share with them. Amen. We need it. We need any extra Bibles to support us. I got. I got a small one in my in my briefcase in there. I, I, I want everybody to have Bibles today, and for that for for the reason, because today is a special service. We, we call it uh, visitor appreciation and the, and the mentality of a town hall meeting, which means you get to ask any question you want. I, I, have, I have no prepared script. Now, I can preach because I know the Bible, but I'm, I'm not here to preach. I can preach if y'all don't have a question, you know. Uh, I say talk, in other words. Um, but um, I, I, want, I want to be able to help someone today amen, amen. Uh, I have a Bible in each one of my briefcases. if you look if you look in all of them you'll find a different Bible in each one of them bring them all no 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 bring them all honey look look in the one in my lounge in that big tall one get that big Bible out of there um, because I like one thing about me I want you to read it for yourself 
Because people, we, I'm a human, just like everybody. We quick to say what the preacher said. But I want us to be able to say that the Bible said. You see, people, we, we can argue pastors all day. We can argue preachers all day. But it ain't but one word of God. Amen. It ain't but one of these. Amen. So when you, when you, when you out witnessing, as I teach you all here at Church of Apostolicity, when you're out witnessing, don't say I said. Don't, don't say your pastor said. Say the Bible said. The Bible said. You shut people up when you do that. Amen. Because you can't argue with the word of God. Amen. Now, we could, we could argue about interpretation. That, that, that could come up, you know. But if, if you know the scripture, then you should be able to explain the scripture by the scripture. That way you can avoid that argument. Amen. And, and that's one of the things that we teach hard here at Church of Apostolicity. I'm a, I am a preacher teacher. Amen. Anybody else need a Bible? We have two more. Everybody good? Because we're going to do a lot of reading, so you need a Bible now. All right? Everybody good? Go to the book of Acts, chapter 17. Amen? Um, we're going to start at verse 16. And Paul was in a city. Paul, everybody know the apostle Paul. He was in a city. He was walking around and witnessing and talking to people. And then they, they tried to, as the young folks say, they tried to jam him up. Amen. They tried to put him on the spot to get him to say something because they didn't understand what he was saying. And a lot of things about apostolic or, or apostolicity, which is the name of, of this church, a lot of times people don't understand what we preach and teach. We preach, and I'm, I'm going to make it simple for you. We preach Jesus. We preach living holy. We preach you, can't, you cannot love the world. Amen. We preach you got to take your life the way you used to be and throw it away and start all over. Amen. Amen. You're going to bring some of the things over, but most of the junk you learn, you're going to leave it on the other side because it doesn't work over here if you're going to live holy. Amen. So Paul was going around preaching, and they claimed it to be a false doctrine, a weird doctrine, a strange doctrine, as you're going to see they called it here. So let's start at verse 16. Book of Acts, chapter 17, we're going to start at verse 16. What does it say? Now, when Paul waited for them at... Hold on, get, get that, my stand. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, verse 16 again, let's read, what does it say? Now, when Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him... When he saw the whole city given to idolatry. In other words, folks wasn't living right. Idolatry means they, they found something else to worship. They wasn't worshiping God or Jesus anymore. They found something else, which is what people do today. Yeah, yeah, down there. Uh, people don't worship Jesus. People say they do, they, they just lying to themselves. When you, when you say that you love God and you're doing everything that the Bible tells you not to do, you don't love him. But here's the problem. And don't take this personal where you get offended. You're ignorant. And that doesn't mean you're dumb. You're ignorant when it comes to knowing what God wants you to do. And that's what Paul was doing. And that's why they was finding fault with Paul, telling Paul he was going around preaching some strange doctrine. It was not strange in the sense of wrong. It was strange in the sense because they didn't know it. Amen. Verse 17 says what? Therefore, disputed he in the synagogue, Jews, and with the devout person, and in the market daily with them that met with him. In other words, he met with people in the church. They called them synagogue. He met with them on a regular basis, and they sat there, and they hashed out what was wrong, what was right, what they didn't mean. Amen. So on. Now, keep in mind, the New Testament did not exist when Paul was talking to them. See, people tend to forget that. We're reading... From, if you're not familiar with the Bible as much, from John all the way to the end is the New Testament. That did not exist. That wasn't written. He had the Old Testament. Amen. Keep that in mind. Verse, what verse we at? 18. He said what? There were certain philosophers of the, and of the stock text encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Others, some 
he seemed to be setting forth a strange God because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. In other words, they thought he was saying something crazy because he was saying, we're going to get up one day, y'all. Everybody in here is going to get resurrected. Some of you are going to get resurrected and go to hell. Some of you are going to get resurrected and go to heaven. But you will get up. That's a given. That's, that's for everybody. You don't have to be saved to be resurrected. Amen. The fact that you were born, you're going to die. This soul has to go somewhere for eternity. And the only two eternities is hell and heaven. Amen. Um, they're, they're passing out papers. So if you have a question that you want to ask and you feel that you don't want to be embarrassed or you don't want nobody to know you, write it down and give it to me. But I want questions. I want, I want to clear up any confusion in your mind. Amen. Amen. Verse 19 says what? And they took him. And brought him to, uh, thank you, saying, maybe we know what this new doctrine, whereof thou, in other words, what in the world are you talking about? See, some people want to know what in the world y'all teach over there at that church, church of apostolicity that people struggle pronouncing and all of that. What, what are they teaching? Number one we teach over here is holiness. Amen. If you notice the sign when you came in, it says, stop, come, come here, Dee Dee, you got on the shirt. Number one rule over here, just face me, keep your back. Uh -uh. That's, that's the number one rule here at Church of Apostolicity. People say, well, I can't stop sinning. I, I'll comment on that later. Yes, you can. You can do whatever you want to do. Amen. You can have a seat. But that's the number one. See, we wear T-shirts over here that say stop sinning. You know, they're, they're, uh, everybody here owns them. Everybody get their first shirt free. Uh, uh, they can, they, you know, they wear it. With regular clothes, we wear it out in the streets and let people know, stop saying it. We're not embarrassed to tell people, you got to stop what you're doing. It's wrong. Amen. Come on, verse 20. That's where we at? 20. He says what? Strange things. To, Paul, you're talking some strange things to our ears. Amen. We would know, therefore, what are you talking about? And you're going to hear some strange things today from me. What am I talking about? Living holy. Stop sinning. Putting sin in the trash. Amen. Verse 21. He said what? For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear. These was a, this, this city was a very knowledgeable city. There was a lot of philosophers. See, what people don't realize, Aristotle, philo uh, uh, Socrates, and all of these people lived before Jesus Christ. And they was hooked into this philosophy thing, amen? They, they thought, you know, what was it, Plato and all of these smart, so-called smart people, they lived before Jesus came on the scene. So when Jesus came on the scene, he had a lot of stuff to fight against. But see, by not knowing history and the Bible, you don't know these things, and that's okay. That, that's the reason you're here today. I want to clear up some stuff. So they was fighting, so all they doing is sitting around talking about how, who the smartest and who could read the stars and who could read it. And see, that's how palm reading and all that stuff. Oh, you know, people talking about that lifeline, you know, in your hand, that when that lifeline, they time somebody died, look at their lifeline, see how short it was. I mean, because people say when your lifeline gets short in your hand, that's when you die. Next time a person dies, look at their hand. See that life. That's a lie. But see, when you folk die, you so busy crying, you don't think about all of these lies you've heard. Amen. Philosophy. People thought they were smart. Amen. 22 says what? Then Paul. Oh, hallelujah. Then Paul stood up in the midst of Mars Hill and said, ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. Don't. Step on a crack, you break your mama back. Don't split no pole when you're walking. All of this, so y'all too superstitious. Amen? Y'all too superstitious. You're scared to go out at night. Because things I ain't going down that street. God can kill you on any street. God can kill you in day, dawn, noon, or night. So don't, don't, don't let the, 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 the spirit of the air convince you certain things you can't do. Well, I ain't going out. Uh, uh, a lot of pastors cut out watching our service because folk get shot. You know, a lot of folk don't get shot too, you know. I've been going to watch night service for almost 30 years. I ain't got shot yet. But, but preachers go to, well, I know it's not safe. It ain't safe. It's never safe out there. You're only safe when God wants you to be safe. So don't get superstitious. Don't, don't let all of these things, uh, people, it's funny, people will go to the grocery store when it's raining, but they won't go to church when it's raining. 
Oh, it's raining too hard. It's not safe. But let you need something you want to cook. Watch how fast you get in that car and go to the grocery store. See, that's superstition. Amen. Come on. Verse 25, he said what? For as I passed by, I beheld your devotions. I found an altar to the unknown God. Oh, hallelujah. What else he said? Whom therefore you ignorantly worship him. They had a, 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 a sign. We'll call it a sign. Billboard or, or, or something up. Saying to the unknown. No, we worship in God. But we don't know who in the world he is. We all are worshiping God. I know who he is. Some people just don't know who he is. But trust me, you're worshiping a God. Now, I like to think you're worshiping the right God. Come on, verse 24. God, come on. He said, well, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord. So he's God that made everything and he's Lord over what? He's God as creator, but he's Lord as over ruling over everything he made. See, and people get confused. How can it be God and Lord? Well, he's God because he's a creator. God is a title. God is not his name. It's a title. He's Lord because he's ruling over everything that he created. So now he functions as another title. Amen. I'm somebody's uh, son, but I'm also a daddy. But when I, my mom is dead now, but when I went to my mom, I wasn't, I wasn't a daddy. I was a son. Amen. Y'all understand? So God, it depends on what road he's in at the time. Amen. Come on, verse 24, from the top, read, say what? God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with 25, neither is worship with men's hand as though he need anything, seeing, give it and breath. He said, now, I, in other words, I really don't need y'all. I really don't. I could do this by myself. But because I'm a loving uh, uh, God, I'm going I'm to I'm give y'all a reason to live. Come and praise and worship me. That's why the scriptures say, if you don't do what I tell you, I get a rock to replace you. God said, I can get a, a rock that we look at as an inanimate object that can't do nothing but just sit there. God said, I can get that rock to praise me. That's why it pays to praise God. It's a, it's a, it's a privilege for us. Come on, verse 26 says what? And have made of one blood all nation." Of men to dwell and have determined the time appointed and the bound uh, again he said have made of all of all blood all nations there ain't no white folk there ain't no black folk there ain't no Puerto Rican there ain't no Jew there ain't no po uh, 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 Mexican there ain't no Japanese there ain't no Chinese all blood came from God all blood came from God just so happened we got different complexions and different eyes and walk different in different cultures. That ain't got nothing to do with it. God chose to do that. Amen. Jeremiah, I'm, uh, 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 my, my wife is, is shorter than me, but she's my wife. I'm taller than her. Jeremiah and Joseph are my boys, but they're taller than me. Amen. But they're still my sons. So just because God made some folk black and some folk what we call white or Caucasian or some folk Hispanic, or something, that don't mean nothing. Amen. God chose to do that. I, I preached that sermon one day why he chose to do that. But he chose to do that. But that does not mean we are not the same. Amen. Amen. I don't care what race of people there is. All of us got two ears, don't we? All of us got two eyes. All of us got, but most of us got Ten, ten fingers. I've seen a person where they had an extra finger. It never did anything. They had to keep it cut off. Amen. But what I'm saying, in general, we all the same. Amen. Cut us open. We all bleed red. Amen. Amen. Ain't nobody no aliens where we bleed in a different color. In other words, stop being prejudiced. Prejudice is not of God. Get that out your system. That's why I have a, a problem when I hear preachers say, you know how we are. Referring to black people. No, how, how are we? Don't, 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 don't preach, don't preach racism in my pulpit. Because they ain't, ain't, we're all the same. Amen? Amen? A lot of us in here are saints and just as low down as we want to be. Then why don't I call you a sinner? You're saying you got the Holy Ghost and you still living like a sinner? But you don't want to be called that. Oh, by the way, we're not Christians. We're saints. 
That's another thing we preach that because the Bible does not call us Christians. Amen. I'm letting you know because some people think I, I preach strange doctrine. I can bag it up in the Bible. Everything I preach, if I can't prove it to you in the Bible, I won't say it. Amen. Come on, verse 20, what we at? 6? 27. Say what? Well, that they should seek the Lord. If happier, they might feel, find him, though he be not far from every. He's not far away. He's just as far as your mouth open and saying, Jesus. That's how far he is. Say Jesus. Yes. He's right there. You can talk to him right now if you wanted to. He'll hear everything you say. He'll hear everything you say. Say Jesus again. Jesus. See, you ain't far away. See, that, that, now, is that far? That's only as far as you choose not to say the name of God, which is Jesus. That's your call. You decide to do that. And I don't mean think Jesus. Thinking Jesus don't, is not the same. You got to say it. He said, confession comes from your mouth, not from your mind. That means you got to verbalize it. Amen. Come on. What verse 28? He said, what? For, it, for in him we and, and as certain also of your own poets have said. In other words, he would tell him, remember, he's talking to them philosophers, them smart people, and telling them, y'all own poets say that, that, that we all come from God. In other words, Back then, people wrote a lot of poems. That's where you get all these poems and poetry and, you know, people into all of that. He was saying, y'all own poets, right? And I, if they are not saved and writing poems, they're telling you that God is real and y'all love poetry. He said, so why ain't y'all believing what you read then? Come on. Verse 29 says what? For as much then as we are, who is the offspring of God? Who, now, who is we? Okay, come on. It's not saints. It's human. Mankind. We're the offspring of God. We're all his creation. We're not all his children. We are all his creation. And that's what Paul is trying to get them to see. He's not talking about children now, so don't get confused. He's talking about creation. God created all. We all came from Adam and Adam came from Amen. Come on. Verse 29 from the top. Read. You say what? We ought not to think that the Godhead is like under gold or silver or stone graven by the art of man. Stop thinking that God is in that little fat man they call Buddha. Somebody made that. They took a tree or a piece of metal and made that. Listen, God, listen, God. God said, don't, don't, don't treat me like I'm an object. Don't, don't treat me like I'm an object. Come on. Verse 30 say what? He said, and the times of this ignorance God winked at. In other words, everybody that's in here today, I want you to listen to me. God said, I winked at your ignorance before. I'm not going to wink at it after today because John is going to clear up a lot of stuff for you. So when you walk out, you will be no longer confused. Now, you can play confused if you want to, but just remember, you wouldn't be here if God didn't want you here. So God wants to answer all your questions, just like them people that were sitting there at Mars Hill and listening to Paul. Paul said, I'm answering all your questions so y'all don't walk out of here ignorant. Now, you're going to know the answer to whatever you want to know the answer to if you ask it. And some of you are going to get answered to questions that you feel you're afraid. There's no, there's, there's, I don't like the youth afraid there's no dumb question. You know, because dumb is not meant, it's not, it doesn't mean what people think it means. Dumb really means that when you know better and then you ask me. Dumb doesn't mean if you don't know, you, you're dumb. That, that's not what dumb really means. But there's no dumb question today. Amen? In other words, there's no ignorant question today. Because if you don't know, you don't know. And you'll be, I guarantee you, every question you got, somebody else got the same question. They're afraid to ask Somebody else got it. At, at, at least three people got it. I ain't going to ask it. And then when you ask it, they so excited. Amen. But they, they, they couldn't bring themselves to ask the question. Uh, verse 31, because he said, well, because he have, this is why he can't afford to let you stay ignorant. Everybody listen to me. This is why God cannot afford to let you stay ignorant. Because what? A day and 
by that man whom he have ordained, whereof he have given assurance unto all men in that he have raised them. God say, I can't afford to let nobody stay ignorant because I'm going to judge everybody. And I'm going to judge you according to Jesus Christ. Now, if I don't teach you about Jesus, then by right, I can't judge you. Right? So God said, I got to fix that. I got to fix that. So he went to the, Paul went to them and telling them, y'all worshiping in this unknown God. He said, but let me tell you who he is. So y'all can be judged fairly. Or let me rephrase that. So God say, I can show y'all I'm fair because I'm going to tell you about it. I'm going to tell you here. Now, Paul went on. What, what verse we stopped at? I tell you, well, let's, let's go and finish up the chapter. Verse 32 says what? And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, others said. Come on, we'll listen to you. But you don't know what you're talking about. We'll, we'll listen to you. That's what they mean. We'll, we'll, we'll listen to you again, but we don't, you don't know what you're talking about. Amen. In other words, keep talking. You ain't nothing but a fool in a way. Come on, verse 33 say what? So Paul departed from among them. How be it? Certain men clave unto him and believe among which was Dionysius and, say that word, and a woman named Darius and other so Paul said, I mean, they told Paul, well, we know you're crazy. We ain't going to listen to you, but, you know, go ahead. Keep talking. Amen. How I, I, I many, I don't have people come to the church and think I'm crazy, but they say, go on, keep talking. He don't know what he's talking about. And they still out getting drunk and think I'm crazy. I'm sober and I'm in my right mind. Amen. It is all because of Jesus Christ. Got nothing to do with John. Trust me. Hallelujah. John get no glory. Where he is, where he want to be, where he going, how he dress, how he talk, where he live. I have nothing to do with nothing. I always like to tell people, if I like to give myself some credit for something, the only thing I give myself credit for is that I had sense enough to call on Jesus. Amen. Other than that, I ain't got an ounce of sense. I'm simple minded. I don't know nothing. And every time I preach, I preach to myself. So when I preach, hallelujah, I don't just preach to y'all. Even today, I'm not just talking to y'all. I'm talking to myself. Amen. Because I need help just like everybody else. Amen. And, and, and some of y'all may think that you in a bad state. Listen, I, I'm an I'm 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 ex-whore. And if I go spiritual, I say I'm still a whore. But I'm going to be nice to myself today. I ain't, you know. But in the world... I had plenty of women at one time. I drank just about any alcohol they had on the market back then. I drank for breakfast. Y'all was eating. I was drinking for breakfast. I was drinking for lunch. I only ate food once a day, usually three or four in the evening. Other than that, I drank whiskey. Not, I didn't mix it. I drank the straight. Crown, I mean, a Budweiser was my water. I did not consume water at all. Not in itself. I didn't. I smoked cigarettes all day. I smoked marijuana occasionally because I got to the point all they did was make me hungry and go to sleep and I didn't want to be hungry and I didn't want to go to sleep. Amen. I got to the point that I was such a big alcoholic I didn't even want no women. Alcohol satisfied me across the board. It just because all it does is it messes with your brain and it jack and then y'all alcoholic you know what I'm talking about. You get to the point only thing you want is to get my and we to say Beverly get our head right get my head right I'm fine so I know what God and God snapped his finger and all of that stuff left me literally have not craved it have not had it don't even want it so I know what God can do now some people he made them struggle some people he snapped finger amen he did what he wanted to do per individual when it came to women that was a fight for me I fought that who probably, I don't know, maybe a year, give or take. And I'm talking about a real fight. I ain't talking about just thinking about it. But I didn't have sex with nobody. When I finally realized like it was wrong, I didn't touch them. I thought about it, but I never did it. I, I, I almost did it, but I never did it. Amen? So I just, I want to I wanna ease you. Eat. Listen, God know how to take care of uh, uh, I always like to use Beverly. He used to sleep in bushes. Amen. Now he at USC getting a master's degree. Amen. So I know what God can do, y'all. 
But you've got to let God do it. Amen? So now I'm going to open it up for questions. Who, who's bold enough to shoot a question at me? Remember, I, I don't know what y'all going to ask me, so I closed my Bible. I have no idea. So I didn't come to supporters. You should have wrote one to help everybody get started. <laughs> Write a question and say, why I got to obey my husband all the time? <laughs> Stand up so y'all can see the first lady. Amen. This is Sister Porter. Stand up. This is the most beautiful woman in the world right here. All right? So y'all know that's how I feel about my wife. Amen? Nobody can match her. Amen? She's strong-willed, but I, like, I, didn't, I didn't want no weak woman. Amen? Sometimes she's too strong, but hallelujah. All right. Come on, somebody. Nothing y'all want to know. Why we, do, do everybody know how to be baptized? You got to be baptized in Jesus' name. That means you got to go down in that wood. Look, out, look through that door there. Look over your shoulder. See that, that piece of wood frame there? That's a baptismal pool. What that means is when, when we baptize you, you go down in that water, your whole body, you, you, you get in and you sit down and you're up about this much and when we take you under. When you go down in that water, God forgive you for every wrong thing you did. He don't just forgive you. He doesn't even remember it no more. Yeah. Do y'all know how y'all got anything you don't remember? Because if you think hard enough, you can remember most things. God said, I can't even pull it up in my memory. Now, God fixed himself so he can't remember all of them women I slept with. Now, you tell me that ain't a blessing? John, remember them. Sometimes I'm laying down at night, I be, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Yeah. But God said, I don't remember you sleeping with nobody, John. The only person I know you slept with is, is Lisa. Huh? So what are you talking about? Like, like, Lord, you should, I don't remember. That's a powerful God that wipe it. Wait a minute. He can wipe his own memory? And, and folk don't want to serve a God like that. I'm just waiting for him to wipe mine. He, he did that for me, yeah. I would love for him to wipe my memory of all the sin I've done. Woo, glory. But that probably would make me arrogant and up and in. I, I wouldn't have sympathy or something, you know. Sometimes when we think we haven't done nothing, we think we're better than people. But when you can look back and know, if it wasn't not for Jesus. What they, what they say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Amen. You got a question? About the time, man. Uh, Mike, Mike, we got it oh, here. Oh, my bad. And I guess if, if people want to, if they write it down, they can, yeah. they can, they oh, can read it. Oh, yeah, I can if you write it, it down, you give them the brother time. Okay. I'll read it. Oh, okay. Unless you want to be the, the, the reader for the day. It, uh, <laughs> I'll read it, Pastor, and then you can answer it. I'm going to read the first one and the second one. Where in the Bible does it say drinking alcohol is a sin? Who in here want to drink? <laughs> Tommy, Tommy wrote that. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 31. Tommy wrote that one, y'all. And Pastor, you have to read it because so we can get it on the tape. Okay, well bring bring okay. it back. Well, if you reading it through the mic, it get on the tape. Oh, man, only mine go through the tape. Uh-oh. -uh. All right, well, anyway, let's go to um, chapter 31 of the book of Proverbs. You got some good ones on this? All right, I like this one. Chapter 31, verse 1. Do we want to start at verse 1? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just let you see something, but I'm, I'm going to do my, I'm going to try not to comment on it. Come on. Verse 1 says what? Now, see, y'all got to read. If y'all want to walk out knowing the answer to these questions, you got to read the Bible. That's why I said we can come up with some more Bible if you need them. Come on. Verse 1 say what? The prophecy that his mother, that his mother taught him. The prophecy. That means the word of God that his mama taught him. Come on. And he's the king. Verse 2 say what? What, my son? 
and what the son of my moon, and what the son of my vow. Give not thy strength unto women. Sidebar. This is a sidebar. Y'all know by sidebar. Men, don't let women control you. Don't give your strength to women. Y'all hear that, men? Women, y'all hear that? I ain't preaching on that today, but I want you to see. That's Bible. Come on. Verse 4 said what? It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for king to drink. Wait a minute. It's not for who to drink wine? And who? And princes what? Wine and whiskey. Or you can say wine and beer. Or wine and Coke 45. Or wine and malt liquor. Amen. For all y'all that want to try to drink near beer and all of that kind of stuff. He said what? It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It's not for king to drink wine. Nor for princes. Verse 5 said what? Wait a minute. If, uh, read that verse again. Now anybody in here that have drank, you know when you get high, you know you don't think straight. That's the whole reason you're getting high. So you don't think straight. Amen. A person come off work and say, I need a little wine for the stomach's sake. I mean, to relax. You get, you, people say, I, 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 uh, I drink because I come home, I need to relax. What does relaxing do? Come on, y'all, somebody talk back to me. What does relaxing do? Make you calm and... You know what? The next time you stressed out, sit on your couch and say, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. Watch how relaxed you become. See, you make wine your God. Because you think that's the only thing can relax you. I guarantee you, take it from me. Jesus, the word Jesus relaxes you. Yes, the, word. The, re the word Jesus can also make you dance and shout. Yes. What, what, do you, what do you want from him? Depend on what you want from him. Look at the next verse. Say what? Yes. Wait a minute. This is a mama telling a king, give strong drink to who? For what? So do you think it's okay to drink? Now I know y'all got that verse. Drink, give a little wine for the stomach's sake. For the stomach's sake. If that baby get an upset stomach, you gonna give him wine for the stomach's sake? If y'all think he really meant wine, let me tell you something about the word wine. The word was used in the Bible interchangeable, but they knew when it meant wine in an alcoholic form or a juice form. We call apple juice juice we call grape juice juice we call now what they drank a lot of back in those grades was uh, uh uh grape juice what we call grape juice that was a big commodity back then that white juice you know how you can drink white grape juice and pomegranate juice when they when they had uh uh, uh what you call them fruit fruit farm was the most ex was was what was where they made their money at so everything was called wine Amen. But then he told them when the wine ferment, when it becomes red, don't drink it. Do y'all know? Well, I ain't going to tell y'all that because I don't want y'all going home and say the pastor taught y'all how to make alcohol. But alcohol is easy to make. Very easy. It don't take a lot to make alcohol. I'm, from a, I'm a country boy. Amen. Uh, then another scripture. So y'all say I'm not a king. Find the scripture for me in the New Testament that we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Come on, find that right quick for me. I think it's Peter or Jane. I should have assigned somebody there. First Peter. Chapter what? Th two. Let's go to verse nine. So y'all say, well, when did I become a king? Now, let me, let me, let me, let me help you out right here. If you're not saved, then you're not a king. This, is the scripture, this verse of scripture is written to people that is already saved. So he's telling them what position they hold in Christ. Amen? But let's, just, let's go with the, 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 the platform that everybody say they say, believe they say, want to be saved today. Amen? Verse 9 said what? But ye are a... 
A what? A what? So God done put you way above prince and king. He done made you a son. Now if you're a son, then you obviously become a what? A prince or princess. Amen? Because you're a son or a daughter. So now, according to the Old Testament, he said, don't drink it because it's going to distort judgment, right? And God said he the same yesterday, today. So you think it's okay to drink? You can't drink. Put it down. Amen. It's not good for you. It's going to mess you up. Another question said, what? Well, if you, if you're a transgender and you get surgeries, sex change, can you change your life in the terms of the law of forgiving you? Do you have to change back to your original sex to be forgiven? Good question. That's a very good question. I'm trying to see who won't get offended if I call them up here. Mishi. Well, I don't, I don't see, I want, a, I want somebody that's saved that's got a tattoo that's visible today. Anybody bold enough to come up here? This is a town hall meeting. This, I'm not preaching a sermon. Come on, Beverly. Huh? Yours all di dilapidated, huh, and gone. Well, look, here we go. Let me, let me tell you something. Here we go. You got a tattoo. You paid for it, right? You got a tattoo, and you wasn't saved, and you paid for it, right? It costs you money. Now, I heard it don't cost a lot of pain. I, I don't have no tattoo. I never got them. I thought, you know, I had my opinion about them. I won't say that today. Uh, but you paid for that tattoo, right? Now, Pastor Portis, Pastor Portis, this is my way of teaching. If you come up, if you get saved and you got tattoos, you got to cover them up if you're going to work in my church. You got to cover them up. Well, supposing I got them on my neck and fade, then you know what the answer to that is. You'll never work in my church. You know why? Because every time a, a sinner come in, they don't know why your tattoo is showing. They don't know. I'm not here to, I'm not here to confuse nobody. So if I got you up here singing and you got a tattoo, the first thing is, oh, so I can wear tattoos at this church. It's no problem. Now, the Bible said don't let your good be evil spoken of. But here's, here's the question that I put in your mind. You paid to get it, right? You got saved, right? Pay to get it off. Right? It costs too much money. Anytime you dump sin, it costs a lot of money. I don't know no sin I quit that was cheap. Because if it wasn't financial, it was against my nature. I don't want to be mad. I want to get even. It's a fight. But you paid money to live wrong. Why don't you pay money to live right? Okay, it costs you $50 to put it on. It costs you $1,200 to get it off. Well, get it off. Amen. It's going to hurt. What's your point? Because that, that don't mean nothing. Get it off. So what that got to do with this? Well, you paid to get your check changed, right? God forgave you for it. But let me ask a man, a man that got changed to a woman, and you a man, so what you going to live now? You gonna, what you going to live? Are you, are you going to keep living a woman? You ain't no woman. You didn't got saved. You got the Holy Ghost. God gave you the Holy Ghost in your wrong state. You paid. Well, I don't know if they can do it. You didn't, you didn't worry about that when you wanted to go wrong. The same God that gave man the mind to convert you to wrong is the same God can give man to convert you to right. You just don't want to go through the, the procedure again. because So now you want to justify. Will God send you to hell or heaven if you don't get a chain? That's out, of my, that's out of my jurisdiction. My jurisdiction is to tell you what to do. My jurisdiction is not to make you do it. Because if I could make you do it, everybody in here would get the Holy Ghost today. I can't make you do it. Can you go back and get it corrected? Listen, anything you can mess up, you can fix. Because you don't mess it up. God can fix anything. The devil mess it up. What the Bible says, the, the devil meant it for evil, but God meant it for? God can change anything. But see, the problem with people, they don't have faith in God. You don't, listen, you putting limits on God? You putting limits on God? You must think God is somebody like you. God can fix anything. 
Just like you can go and get a tattoo removed, you can go back and put back them parts or take away them parts. Amen? So don't say you can't do it. People just don't want to do it. Amen? And they want to justify. But again, I can't, I can't tell you who God going to have mercy on. That's out of my jurisdiction. I can tell you this, that he'll show mercy where he want to show mercy. Now that's Bible. I can't tell you. See, let me tell y'all something about grace and mercy. Grace is the preaching of the gospel. Right now, we are all getting grace because we're being told what's wrong and what's right. That's your grace. Mercy comes in when you die and God determined that you really work hard enough. I'm going to show you all that before we leave tonight, uh, this morning. Amen. Grace comes in. I mean, mercy comes in when you die. And God said, well, I don't know, Dee Dee. Did you, did you work hard enough? Did you really put forth effort to do what I told you to do? That's where the mercy comes in at. See, we got this mercy and grace. The preaching of the gospel is the grace. Unmerited favor. God keep telling us over and over and over and over what we do wrong. That's why I come to church. I say me. I come to church every Sunday, every Monday, every Wednesday, because I want to be told what I'm doing wrong. That's grace. And I'm going to get all, I'm going to suck up all the grace I can get because I want to make sure I get this right. So when I do, listen, you, 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 sometimes you hear people say, well, I don't think that sin will send you to hell. Tell me what sin will send you to hell, and that's the one I preach. Now, since we got a big list, Make that list as small as possible, and God will show you some mercy. But again, be it known, I do not, I can't preach mercy. Because I don't know what, when God going to give it, and how he going to give it, and who he going to give it to. I can tell you this, mercy is available. But God say, don't presume upon my mercy either. Because if you think you know what I'm going to show you mercy on, you say, let me Because I don't tell nobody. He tell no one what kind of mercy he's going to give you individually. Amen? A Muslim going to hell. Well, if they keep practicing Muslim, or what is it they practice? Uh, Islam, yeah. Yeah. You know what else? Saints going to hell if they don't live, right? What you call yourself is kind of irrelevant, but we need to call ourselves something so we can say, let people know where we are. But what it really boils down to is how you live. I know some Baptist churches preach, preach strict doctrine like I do. But in the title, it's, it's the word Baptist. Apostolic, apostolicity don't even show up in their title. But you go in their church and they preach in baptism in Jesus' name, the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, living holy, putting down all that stuff. So it's not about what you call yourself. It's about what kind of life you live. A amen. So it, it, you can call yourself, it doesn't matter what, I, God gave me the title Church of Apostolicity. That's why I call it that. Amen. But it, it, it doesn't matter what you call yourself. So don't, Muslim is not a human. Muslim is a religion or a lifestyle or teaching just like apostolic is. But I know a lot of preachers that according to the law, the law of God, they're going to hell. And they're apostolic. But I don't know if God going to show him mercy. I'm just saying according to the law, the teaching, they doomed for hell. Now, somebody can say, I'm doomed for hell. You might be right. But mercy is going to kick in. And I don't know. Everybody understand? I don't know what God going to show you mercy at. Now, don't presume upon his mercy. I can tell you, if you presume upon his mercy according to the scripture, you're going to hell. Let out because he tell you don't do that because you're telling God what to what sin to accept we don't tell God what sin to accept we lost our mind well all right God gonna have you hear people say God gonna have to forgive me for this one all right keep on believing he gonna forgive you amen I'm gonna say this and I agree that is there one more now I read the next question repentance is not just verbal Y'all understand? Or confession is not just, it's, it comes from your heart. See, you can, you can open your mouth. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. Come on, you know you ain't sorry. You got to mean it from your heart. That's what God, God said, with y'all mouth, y'all get very close to me. But with y'all heart, y'all are far from me. Amen? Next question. Are Christians from different denominations going to hell? 
a Christian from different denominations? Well, I think I answered that maybe already. I'm going to keep these questions. I think I, answer, I may have answered that already. It's not about what you call yourself. It's about what kind of life are you living. Amen. See, let me tell y'all something about Moses. If y'all know anything about Moses or if you don't know, Moses, God said, Moses is my friend. I talked to Moses face to face. He said, I talked to y'all in clouds. See, what it was when they was coming out of uh, uh, Egypt, the cloud during the day when they moved, it was over a million people. When they moved, they followed a cloud and God would speak out of the cloud. At night when they moved, it was a ball of fire and God would speak out the ball of fire. But when it came to Moses, it's like, I'm talking to you. That's the way he talked to Moses. Moses, when he died, the devil went to get Moses' soul to take it to hell. Now, this is all Bible, but I don't have time to go and show y'all all the scripture. The devil went, and then the angel Michael and Gabriel had to fight the devil to not get Moses' body. And basically, Moses, I mean, the devil told God, he sinned, and I deserve to get his body. Moses only committed one sin. One sin. One sin. According to what the devil knew with God's law, Moses goes to hell. Right? So that's why he, when he went to get the soul, the two angels had to fight. No, you ain't getting Moses. They ain't going through a fight. And God had to come down and told Satan, get up off him. Leave him alone. You can't have him. Now, why did God tell Satan, you can't have Moses when according to my law cause of mercy he said oh, oh say I got something called mercy now, I'm just paraphrasing it he said you don't know nothing about that now watch this if God said Moses is my friend and God said I talked to Moses face to face not in clouds and hiding God said and I and I kept him out of Canaan land for one sin now the sin was when they was coming out of Egypt when they needed some water, the first time they needed water, God told Moses to take his cane and strike the rock and water poured out. The next time when they came and they needed water, God told Moses to speak to the rock. But Moses smote the rock because the rock was Christ. And he smote it. It was Christ the first time. It was Christ the second time. But the first time God said, hit me because you're ignorant. You don't know no better. I don't have a problem with that. Second time, Moses knew what he was doing, and he was so mad at the people, he got angry and said, y'all stiff neck, y'all always begging for water. And then he hit the rock, and God said, because you struck, you, you struck, you struck, thank you, you struck the rock, you ain't going into Canaan. Now, Canaan was a type of heaven for the Jews on earth. Amen? But because he, watch this, God told Moses, you sinned, the devil heard it, I got that body, God got mercy. You see what I'm saying? And that's why the devil couldn't get him. Now watch this. This is the point I want you to get. Moses, as perfect as he was, had what? One sin. And it almost, now how many sins you got? And God ain't talking to you face to face. Can God call you his friend? You really want to risk? You really want to risk? Thinking you're going to go to heaven? And you loaded up with sin? Next question. What does the Bible say about smoking weed? I love these questions. Come on. That, that, hey, that's fine. Because I know everybody say God made it. Why can't we do it? God made sex too. But he told you how to get it, didn't he? Let's go to um, find the scripture. Who would that find? Filthiness of the flesh. Look up the word filthiness. The phrase filthiness of the flesh. I want to say Ephesians or Philippians. I'm a, I'm a, I know the Bible, y'all, but I don't know how to go to scriptures like that because I don't know where they are. I pray God never to give me that ability. I don't want that ability. You know how some folks say, oh, it is in Romans chapter 5, verse 2. I, I can't do that. I, I'm, I don't have that ability. But I can tell you if you quote something, if it's wrong. 2 Corinthians, Sec, Corinthians what? 7-1. Seven, one. Seven, one. You sure? Yeah. 
seven, uh, chapter 7, verse 1. All right, Brent. Uh, uh, special. Everybody got it? Let me know when everybody got it. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Huh? Everybody got it? Verse 1, read. What does it say? Now, stop there. Keep something there. Put a marker there. And I want you to go. Keep something there. We're going to come back. Um, chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 1 of the same book. Go to verse 1. Chapter 1, verse 1 of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1. Everybody got it? Verse 1, what does it say? Who is he writing to? Who is he writing to? Saints. He's not writing to sinners. He's writing to saints. All right? So understand, he's writing to people that's already saved. Everybody got that? See, we got to remember that the letter was written to specific group or people for a specific question that they had. Now, this is not Bible, in the Bible, rather. They had wrote to Paul, asked him questions, he wrote back the answer. God recorded Paul's answers as the New Testament. That's God's decision. Amen? Now, go back to chapter 7, verse 1, and, he, and read that again. Having therefore... Who, wait a minute, who got the promises? Not sinners, right? So the promises is to saints, not sinners. Come on. Having deep, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. Now, we know that anything that's filthy, it dirties up our flesh. What does cigarettes do to your flesh? Get your cancer, huh? It can make it very dirty. Make it very dirty. Filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Now, cigarettes don't affect the spirit. I don't, I don't think. I mean, other than the fact that you want to get high off of nicotine or something like that, you know. But it affects the flesh. And since we are saints, and then there's a scripture that said, Know ye not that your body is the, the temple of the Holy Ghost? You really want to mess up this temple? You really want to give yourself cancer on purpose? Because it's been proven. They even put it on the cigarettes. You could get cancer, but smoke on, man. Right? So you can get. So why would you want to go around smoking when God say, from all filthiness of the perfecting holiness, in the fear of, get right, in the fear of God, put them down. Who wants to smell a cigarette? I don't want you coming to church sitting under me smelling like smoke. Now, now, don't, don't take that wrong sinners. I want y'all to come in the way you are, and I want saints to come the way you are, because you can't get fixed until you come. But my point in reference to answering the question, you can't smoke. Cigarettes nor marijuana. Amen. Amen, or cocaine, or crack. Amen. Or angel dust, or, or uh, what that one I used to smoke that mess. I know you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that one I smoked that messed up my... Um, uh, appendix, uh, hash. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Tommy, you got to. But Pastor, weed is legal and it's of the earth. I don't care. Shacking up is legal. Right? Having babies outside of marriage is legal. Are we a children of the world or are we the children of God? Well, then you can't do it. Listen, if the world tells you to do something that's a sin, you can't do it. Nobody gives you the authorization to sin. Nobody. My wife has to obey me, but I cannot give her authorization to sin. She got to override what I say when I'm telling her to sin. Amen. The Bible tells the members of the church, obey your pastor. He said, because I got to give an account for you when you die. Y'all know that? There's a scripture that said, when you die, I got to go before God and say, he gonna say, "Well, John, 
what you got to say about Tommy? I got to give an account for him. If he die under my ministry, or if I die before he die, God is going to ask me, what do I think about Tommy? And I can't lie for you. See, right now, if, if somebody asks me about Tommy, well, you know, pray for him, work on him. I can't say that in front of God when I'm up there. I'm going to say, oh, he was low down, no good. <laughs> Not that he is, y'all. <laughs> Amen. Am I answering everybody's questions good so far? Amen. Next question. How do you know profanity is a sin which made certain curse words bad? Ass. A-S-S. -S. Ass. Did I just cuss? <laughs> Depending on how I use it. Right? Because ass really is a donkey. Or a mule. Depend on how you use it in a sentence. Now, there's certain words I'm not going to say because they ain't even in the Bible. Now, y'all know. Y'all came up with them words. Y'all know those are You meant those to be derogatory. Amen. It's very hell. Y'all going to hell. Did I just cuss? But I can rephrase it and make it a curse word, can't I? Amen. So I, 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 be, I, 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 like, I like using the word nigga when I preach. I like to see the saints get all. Y'all don't want to be called a nigga? It ain't a curse word. It's a derogatory word. But all they really mean is ignorant. Everybody on God's earth is a nigga. Because everybody here is ignorant to something. You, you got an uh, open heart surgery. He can do open heart surgery and save your life. But when it comes to the word of God, he's ignorant. Did you follow me? All the word mean is ignorant. So are you a nigga? You want to bet? You are. I am too because I don't know everything. I know a lot of stuff, but I don't know everything. See how y'all get tensed up? It's just a word. Now you could cuss me out and it wouldn't bother me. But some of these things you better not cuss out. Some of them ain't over there yet. Because I know it's just words. Don't mean nothing. That just, that just mean you ignorant. That's all. You can cuss me out and I say, well, you just ignorant. Now, you ready to fight me because I called you ignorant, but you done called me all type of itches and witches. <laughs> Amen? That's why you know it's a curse word. When you use word and you know you're not using them right. right, right. Or you use a word that you know. Come on, let's be realistic. You, you know some words you know. Watch this. I showed them this in Sunday school this morning. Romans chapter 2. Let me show y'all something real quick. Still, see, I'm long-winded when it comes to answering questions because I like to get a thorough answer. I don't want you to walk away, but y'all don't have nowhere to go because we're going to feed y'all too. We got some food for you and everything. We're going to fellowship. Amen. We're going we're gonna to treat y'all like kings and queens today. And y'all, then y'all going to join the church and, and never leave. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Let's go to chapter 2 of the book of Romans. Let's go to verse 11. Chapter 2, verse 11. Are y'all enjoying yourself? I'm having a ball. I'm having a ball, man. I'm having a ball. I love, I love teaching people about the word of God. Sometimes we, once a year, we have a five-hour Bible class. Amen. I should have told Angela to give y'all a calendar. Where Angela at? Every visitor that's here today, that's non-member, I ain't talking about them like that come here all the time and just won't fill out the, the membership form. I'm talking about those that are visiting, give them, print out calendars real quick. What month we in? Uh, August. Give them, no, give them August, September, October, November, December. That's five. I mean, you got to do it here because you got to do it. But please, before you leave, get, get, your, get your, don't worry about a cover. That'll take too long. Just, just print them out. Print them out in color. Uh, so, I mean, I guess what? Do about 25 sets? That should come close. And we're going to give them. Y'all look at the calendar. Y'all know everything we're doing the rest of this year. Amen? Come on. Real quick. Chapter 2, verse 11. He said what? There's no respect to person with God. Know that. 
That go back when I was telling y'all about all these different races. God said, I don't care about that stuff. That's y'all problem. Come on. Verse 12 said what? For as many that have sinned without law shall also perish without law. For as many that have sinned in the law shall be judged in the law. What he was telling them, because them Jews were trying to say that the Gentile, oh no, it was, well, it was, it was church folks. Let's put it like that, because it was Jews and Gentile. They were trying to say, well, the Gentile never knew the law so why are we gonna be punished you never told us because if you know the, the law was originally given to the jew amen but god is saying wait a minute hold let, let me clear this up for y'all i got no respect the person okay you knew the law jews and you didn't do it you in trouble gentile you didn't know the law you in trouble and this is why look at it verse 13 he said what for not the hearers of the law are justified before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Watch this. Verse 14 says what? For when the Gentiles in the law, he said even though they didn't know, but it was in them. God said, because I put it in them. You don't need nobody to tell you not to steal that candy mama told you don't touch. You knew that. Two years old, stolen candy. Mama come in and say, where that candy? Wait a minute, who, who, who told you to steal? Where you get that from? Did you take that candy? Jar? No, mama. Wait a minute, who taught you to lie? You're only two years old. But you know, innate, I'm scared. I stole the candy, got in trouble. I ate the candy and lied. Now I'm scared I'm going to get caught. You got three witnesses. The Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word should be. You got three witnesses that just told you. Number one. It told you not to do it. Number two, it told you that you shouldn't have done it. Then number three, it told you to lie. I mean, number one, it told you not to do it. Number two, it told you to lie. Number three, it said, now you're scared because you lied because you did something you weren't supposed to. But you ain't, did you read that in the Bible? It said, thou, do you think a two-year-old read in the Bible said, thou shalt not steal? They didn't read that. Look at the next verse. 15, he said, for, for which the works of the law written in their heart, their conscience, also bearing witness and their thought the meanwhile accusing or when you do wrong when you cuss you know you're wrong you either going to admit accuse yourself or you're going to excuse yourself in other words try to justify well they made me so mad and i couldn't help myself god said i don't care you shouldn't have done it you can't excuse yourself when it comes to sin now it's good to accuse yourself because you might fix it Fix it. Amen. Next question. Is there a correct way to pray? If so, how can I be challenged? Challenging how to get better with knowing how to pray and what to say. Prayer means simply this talking to God. Amen. That's all prayer really means. So the simplest way to pray, talk to him. You ain't worried? Talk to him. You scared? Talk to him. You hungry? Talk to him. You ain't got money? Talk to him. You want to talk? You want to pray better? Talk to him. You want to go to church regular? Talk to him. You ain't got to get on your knees. That's good. Talk to him. Getting on your knees. Let me rephrase that. That's why we have prayer services. It's a designated time for you to get on your knees to concentrate yourself. Or uh, concentrate on what you're saying now. But I ride in my car. I talk to God 24-7. Yeah. Y'all may not believe it. While I'm talking now, I'm talking to God. There's a thought that passed through my mind. Like, Lord, what to say? Make sure I say this right. Because I'm reading faces too. Like, Lord, okay, I see her face. How am I going to put that in? But I'm, I'm holding a conversation while I'm asking God how to phrase this. Just for you. But you don't know that. Now, that comes from years of praying and knowing God. I don't expect you to get there, but I'm just telling you how serious it can become and how good you can get at it. It boils down. Remember when Jesus, when Jesus went to pray to get Lazarus up and he came and he told them, he said, now, Father, now me and you know we talk all the time. He said, but for the sake of them, in the name of Jesus. Well, he didn't say that, but Lazarus. Make a big deal. He said, I really could have just said, Lad, come on out of there. And he could have went on back to having a regular conversation. Because he's God. He said, but because y'all always think somebody got to get up. And Lord, bless him. And Lord, will you please and help him. Lord, and then you ain't got to do all of that. You ain't got to do all that. That ain't necessary. Just pray. 
I teach him here to pray, and I teach him. Now, if the Holy Ghost get a hold of you and you get heavy, hey, by all means, please do it. But just know you don't have to think that you got to be a prayer warrior to be able to pray. Prayer, all it means is simply talking to Jesus. Amen. That's all it is. When you're sitting at your dining room table eating and you had a bad day, just say, Lord, but Father, will you help me? I'm just tired. I don't know. The people getting on me. Why are you eating? That's fine. God understand. Now, what much is known, much is required. What I mean by that, the more you get to know God, the more you're going to learn to come to church and pray and pray and pray and, and pray on before you go to bed and pray when you get up. But that comes with knowledge. Remember, I started out showing you that a lot of time we ignorant and don't realize how ignorant we are because nobody have told us what to do the right way. We just don't know. And God is saying, I'm not winking at your ignorance after today. Not y'all. Everybody is here. He's saying, ain't winking at y'all ignorance no more. So don't y'all try to get away with that. Y'all can't tell God you don't know. God then gave you enough to put you in the position to learn more. I'm so, I, I, I love my church so much. I say this is the best church on God's earth. Amen. And I mean that. I, I say that. I don't care what people say. Well, maybe yours is good, but for me, this is the best one. Until God tell me different, I ain't going nowhere. Well, you the pastor. Well, God can still send me somewhere. But in the meantime, oh, hallelujah. All right. Next one. Where in the Bible does it say women can't wear pants? Oh. Deuteronomy chapter 20, is it? Somebody find that. Ask some of these women to find They know where that is quick. They have to read that on a regular basis. Isn't that right, Misha? <laughs> what is it? Deuteronomy. That's Old Testament. 20 what? 22 5. That's good. Hey, it's a good question. These are great questions. Twenty-two verse five. Everybody got it. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah! Why you take me off the internet, man? Huh? Somebody wanted to hear that answer. You definitely should have put this answer on there. That's the biggest fight they had with Pastor Portis. Verse five. What does it say? Y'all mumbling. Come on, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do are... So they make women pants. I'm going I'm I'm to I'm give you the real short version because I know what goes through your mind. Well, that's Old Testament. All scripture given by the inspiration of God. Paul was talking about the Old Testament, not the New, because the New didn't exist. So let's clear up that real quick. He was telling you that verse, amen, was referring, I mean, that statement he made to Timothy, he would tell, he wrote to Timothy to tell Timothy how to be a pastor. See, people ignore that. He wrote it to Timothy, telling Timothy how to be a pastor. He told a man to be a good pastor, tell women they got to obey all scripture. Tell men they got to obey all scripture. What scripture was he referring to? The Old Testament, because the New Testament didn't exist. Okay? So you may say they make women pants. All right. And you say pants is a woman garment. So every woman, so when a man and women, when they wear pants, you sit like this. Right? Now, I sit like this all the time. If I had on a dress, I'd do this. Or, what is it? Kilt? Tilt? Gilt? Whatever that word is. If I had on that, I still would sit like this. But I'm a man. For all y'all that can't see, I'm sitting with my legs open. Okay. You got it? If a man sat with his legs open... And a woman look, a man gonna be glad. I'm just telling you how we think. Y'all don't y'all ain't men. Cause we know you checking me out. All right, women. Now watch this. If 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 pants is a man garment, 
then if your garment allows you to open your legs with your dress on, open your legs. Since if, if you say there ain't no difference in garment, then sit with your legs open with a dress on. Let me see you do that. Why ain't you doing that? Because you don't want to expose yourself. Now watch this, ladies. This is for ladies. It's not for women because, you know. Ladies, when you wear pants and you sit with your leg open, the man look why you got a problem. Because you know you're exposing yourself. It, make you, it takes away your femininity and put masculinity in you. Because you're sitting there like a dude. That's what we call it. You're sitting there like a dude. You ain't no dude. You're a woman. Close your leg. I don't want my wife sitting with her legs open with pants. Now, she don't wear them. Pants or dresses. Because I don't want nobody walking around looking at her. It's my wife. I want you gawking at her. Not like that. But if she got her legs closed with pants, as you call pants, or dress, ain't nobody going to do that. So if you think pants is a woman garment, then you keep on wearing it and sit like a dude. And when a man walk by and gawk at you, don't you say nothing. Because that's a woman garment you got on, right? Because if he walked by and saw you with a dress on, he wouldn't do that and you wouldn't say nothing. So what are you talking about? He don't want you putting on nothing that takes you out of the sex or, 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 or come close to taking you out of what you are. Amen. That's why men ain't supposed to wear earrings. When back in my day, all y'all that I'm 58, all y'all that running my age, when a man put on an earring back in the old day, he was a sissy. And then the devil got slick. The devil said, if you wear it in the right ear, you're okay. But if you wear it in the left ear, you're a homosexual. And then the devil got slicker. Wearing one both of them. Now you can't figure out what I am. But just because the, the football players and the basketball players and all I'm wearing, everybody think it's cool. Sin is sin. I don't care who committed. Even if I committed, sin is sin. You can't walk around. And let, me, let me tell you something else. Women. Watch the, okay, they make, they, make, they make women pants. That's what y'all want to say. When a man wear tight pants, what do we think, Brother Tommy? He gay. Sissy. I like to say sissy. That's, that's my terminology. Amen? So why y'all wear your pants so tight? Why you wear Because you want somebody to see your figure. That's the only reason you do it. Because otherwise, if you was going to wear it like a man, then wear them loose. Because men don't wear them. Men don't wear them tight. I ain't say males. I said men. Right? So you, you're wearing clothes tight because you... And, and listen, listen, women. It's just in y'all nature. God made y'all that way. Don't, 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 don't. I, I wish I had time to really explain it. But if you, if you, if you came here, you know, look at all the women I got in the church. They, 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 they learn. I, I, I explain to them how it all worked. God made men certain ways and made women certain. And you can't take that from us. That's the way He made us. That won't change. Amen. But oh, I don't care if we run out. Y'all just have to make a second CD. Uh, uh, God made us a certain way. Amen. God made, listen women, y'all are cursed to make men look at y'all. But see, y'all don't want to accept it. When Adam sinned, when Adam sinned, he told the woman, your desire shall be to your husband. What he was saying from now on, women going to always try to impress some man. When y'all first started wearing makeup and eyelash and lipstick, you were trying to impress some boy. Because it's in your nature to do that. Now y'all, how do I do it for myself? That's a lie. Because as soon as a man don't acknowledge you after a while, y'all go to feeling bad. Ain't nobody looking at me. Some of y'all bold enough to say it, but most women always act. Listen, y'all want men to look at you. It's, it's, a, it's a curse because of ease sin. You can't change it. Amen? But that don't mean you go out of the way and do things you ain't got no business. So don't misunderstand. When I, don't you say, well, since we're cursed, I can, I'm not saying that either. Amen? Don't you go out looking for husbands and nothing like that. Now you, you, you double cursing yourself now. Amen? But what am I saying? God made it like this. Now, since we know this is the way it is, why not? Let's, let's do it the right way. Amen. Why not look... A lot of these sisters that came in here and got out of pants and they come back, they said, Pastor... Man, they say I look like a lady. I said, because you, it, listen, pants changes you to a certain degree. 
Now, next time y'all put on pants, watch how you sit. You don't sit with your leg closed when you got on pants. Maybe you don't open them as wide as we do. But some of y'all do. You do. Because pants make you do that. You feel them covered up. I understand that. But in the end, then somebody say, listen, they pants evolved what they call pathologs. They made male garments for them to go to war in. And it evolved in what we call pan. Do y'all know that the Supreme Court, I mean the court just allowed women to wear pants in the courthouse in 95, I believe? Look it up. 95. I may be off on the year, but it was 90 something. Because they know it was just too masculine. They wanted the women to look like women. Now, why are y'all mad? Because we want women to look like women. We so confused now we look at a man or a woman. We got to look at everything to figure out if I'm looking at a true man or a true. Oh, hallelujah. I saw a hand up. You had your hand up? You had a question? Huh? No, I'm trying one in front of you. Yeah. Louder. Give him the mic. I have bad hearing, so you, you have to. I was wondering, like, wouldn't that be judging? Like, I thought God judged you of who you are, not what you do. Hmm. There's a scripture. The first scripture, the first scripture I'm going to give you, he said, modest apparel. So I have to teach you as a pastor what's modest apparel. Second of all, he told you when a man, I didn't quote this one for you, in the scripture in the Old Testament, he said, when a man wear an earring, that means he's somebody's slave. So God told you don't put it on. I was answering in relationship to the question about pants, but now you want me to go to answer the question about why men shouldn't wear it? God said, when, you, when a man, he said, when you get a slave, put an earring in his ear. You, are you somebody's slave? When you wear an earring? Yes, you are. You're the devil's slave. Because God said, my slave don't wear earrings. So who you belong to, God or the devil? And, and uh, let me tell y'all something about judging. Me telling you what this says is not judging you. Me telling you what this says is telling you what this says. Now, judging, see, people, the devil, how y'all done messed that up, you judging. I cannot tell you if you're going to hell or heaven. I can't put you there. I can tell you what the scriptures say you're going if you do this. But can, I mean, when you die, come on, you're going to hell. I can't do that. That's judging. Judging, go think about the courthouse. The judge say you're guilty. Can I say somebody's guilty and going to hell? So I'm not judging you. I'm telling you what the scriptures say. I'm going to always tell you what the scriptures say. But it's up to you to go out and do it or not do it. That's your call. Amen. So I'm not judging you. The Bible says when a man put an earring in his ear, he's somebody's slave. The world initially said when a man put an earring in his ear, he's a sissy. And the devil let us overrode all of that to now it's a fad. Now it's conforming to the world. Now it's loving the world. And the Bible said if a man is my son, love not the world, neither the thing that are in the world. You see, so I can chop it up all kinds of ways. At the end of the day, it's wrong. Amen? I, I, I could go deeper than that, but I'm not going to do that. I'll let y'all become a member, then I can, I can teach you some more. Come on, another question. Where in the Bible does it say women can't wear weeds? <laughs> I love these questions. Come on, uh, is it Peter? No braiding of the hair. Platting of the hair. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. What about what? For some reason, I can't hear. Glue. What about glue? What if it's glued in? When you get a weed, you got Oh, I'm going to explain it all. Come on. Oh, I got it. I got it. I want to know color, too. You, you want the color. Got yeah. it. I got it. Trust me. Trust me. All of it would have came in, in the same thing. Did y'all find this scripture? What is it? First Corinthians 11. Go to Peter. James is over there, too. First Corinthians 11. 11, 46. That's what you said? That's long hair. 
That's, that's about cutting. First Peter what? First Tim, that's the one I want first. First Timothy what? That's the one I want first. Because he's telling a pastor. Get that. He's telling Timothy how to be a pastor and telling Timothy what he has to do to be a good pastor. I'm a pastor. Right? 2-9. What does that say? Women adorn themselves Modest apparel. Come on. This, this, is my, this is my daughter. Y'all don't have to worry. She ain't going nowhere. Modest apparel. What else? Sobriety. Sobriety. Keep, remember that word. What else? Not with what? Braided hair. Or costly. Let's start with modest apparel. What's modest? You think that's modest, right? Okay, that's modest. You, you think that's modest, right? You think yours is modest, right? Do you? She think hers is modest, right? You think yours is modest, right? You think yours is modest, right? Who get to choose? Who get to choose? What was your answer? The pastor. I get to choose. I get to tell you what God think is modest. Now watch this. I get to choose. Now, you may say another pastor say that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. But you've got to remember what we read in Romans is going to accuse you or excuse you. So when you're in doubt whether you should do something that just told you you shouldn't do it because God put it in you. But let's go back. Since I get to choose, since I get to choose to tell you what modest apparel is, then I don't want you coloring your hair. Why? Because it really becomes a costly array. Didn't he say, isn't that in there? Because yeah, yeah. why? That's costly, isn't it? And it's a ray. Costly array meaning you're making yourself visible so everybody can acknowledge you pretty. That's what you're doing it for. That's the whole reason of doing it. Amen? Now, come on. See, y'all don't, see, I make you deal with reality over here because we know we do things just to look good. Oh, I think I look pretty. You say that to yourself, but you won't say it out loud. Somebody make you mad, y'all. Well, I know I'm cute. Okay. Right? Why are you cute? Because I dyed my hair. <laughs> Amen. Not with braided hair. Braided hair. So you can't put braids in your hair. Now, let's go back to, uh, 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 no, I want to go to uh, the one Mother Donna said. Now, I, I, I would say, but I want to read it. What was it? 11 what? Do not. Well, let, let's. Um, well, you say the woman has her glory. Fifteen. Come on, real quick. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 15. For, but if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. For her hair is given to her for a... Why would you want to cover up your hair and put some fake hair in there? Y'all talking about weeds and gluing? God say, I gave you hair. Why you want to cover it up? Now watch this. Watch this. Y'all holler about my hair broke out because you mistreated it. Because you start putting braids in it. Every time you put them in, you broke your hair out. You start using all of them chemicals and you jack your hair up. Now you want to go stick some fake hair in your head to justify why you did wrong in the first place. Why don't you just let it all grow back? I got some sisters in here. Hair was messed up. And they come out them weeds and come out them braids. It took them a while, but they have. Listen, Mother Donna, look at her hair. Now she can't. She, she, and see, here's another thing. Y'all put braids and y'all put weed because y'all lazy. Now, it ain't what you do sometimes. It's the spirit behind what you do. Because it's easy to get up in the morning and put your hair in some water and shake it but when it's your nappy hair you gotta comb it you gotta press it you gotta do all of these things so to avoid putting effort in keeping your own hair you get lazy and lazy is a sin understand this listen i'm talking fast i but i i i, I get happy and i get kind of but look what happens is that you get lazy so now you don't want to keep up with the glory 
God said your hair is your glory. Why would you want to mess that up? God said I gave that to you for your glory. To make you look good. All of y'all hair would be long if you stopped mistreating it. But you don't treat it right. Amen. And I got plenty of women in here. I'm a, it's a witness. They done went through it. They done fought. They done struggled. But ask them now. Listen, I'm, I'm saving you money by not dyeing your hair. I know I'm saving you money by not getting it braided. And I know I'm saving you money by not weaving it. Let your own hair grow out. It'll grow back. The same God that gives you the Holy Ghost can grow your hair. The same God that can heal your cancer can give you hair. The same God that can take away a headache can give you hair. Listen, y'all put restrictions on God because you're lazy. You don't want to put the work and effort in maintaining your own hair, so you make it simple. Come on, let's be real. Listen, all that old fake hair you got, it does not absorb water like your hair does. Synthetic mixed in it. If it's not all synthetic. So you can do this and shake the water off. And do this and it's dry. But you can't do that with your own hair. Tell me that ain't lazy. Stop talking. Tell me that ain't lazy. See, it ain't, watch this. It ain't so much sometimes what you do. It's the spirit behind what you do. That's what makes it become a sin. And see, and listen, sin is progressive. It never stops. Today is fake hair. Tomorrow it we, the next time God only knows where you're going to. Because nobody stands in one sin and stay there. When I started drinking, I did not start out on Crown Royal. I started out on Boom Farm. For all y'all that don't know, that was like a, a tent of alcohol in some Kool-Aid. That's why I thought I could drink it. And then when I liked the feeling, I went, and I went. Before you know it, I was addicted to crown raw. I needed the real deal. Strong stuff. You know, stuff say you put hair on your chair. I needed some whiskey. But I started out with Boom Farm. Listen, some of y'all started out with a simple braid. <laughs> Need I say any more? Look where you're at now. Now your hair ain't no good. Now you almost literally got to wear weeds and braid because you don't have no hair. You done tore yours up. And then y'all walk around with your head itching. <laughs> what you doing all that for? Because you won't put your own hair and that synthetic hair is causing your skin to dry out and you full of dandruff. Now your head itching. See, y'all think I don't know all of that. I'm a pastor. God teaches me all that stuff. Amen. Where in the Bible does it say you can't wear gold or jewelry? You just read it. Jewelry. Now, I don't preach that yet. God have told me the whole law. He said, costly array. What you think that is? I could. He said, gold and costly. Now, see, I normally don't talk that one because God had always said, John, hold off, hold off. But y'all done brought the question up. Go back to Timothy. What you say? Brian, no, don't preach it. No, don't preach it. I ain't going to preach it. I'm just going to answer a question. Because God is merciful for y'all. God is in John. Get them to this point before you get them. Amen. He said, when of gold, right? What did I say? A costly array? Read it real quick. It was 1 Timothy, wasn't it? 2.11? Nine, read it. What does it say? Now, I've never preached, so I've never preached wearing jewelry. I don't wear jewelry because I don't like it. That's me. I don't like watch. I don't like nothing on my arm. I want nothing around my neck. I've never wore an earring because when I grew up, if you put an earring in your ear, if mama didn't kill you, everybody going to call you a sister. So I never got to wearing an earring. Thank God. Amen. I'm, I'm glad God kept me straight. So you don't. I can preach it. I can preach it. But see, I, 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 I'm, I'm of this persuasion. If I, can get, if I can get the men and the women dressing right, the jewelry going to come automatically. Because you're going to realize it, it's something about the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost really gets you to a certain point, it automatically takes you to the next one. It, do y'all understand what I'm saying? Some things I don't have to preach. Some things, I, some things y'all just know is just not right or or automatically but sometimes the Holy Ghost just got to stir you up to convince you don't do that don't don't do that just like sometimes y'all some of the saints are saying well pastor I didn't ask you because I know what you was going to say well how did you know what I was going to say 
because the Holy Ghost told you what was right. You really didn't need me to say it. But instead, you still wanted me, to, you wanted to hear it, and that's the that's Bible. That's God. He made it that way. Nothing you can do about that. Amen? When the Bible does just say, some of your children, who? Spare the rod, you spoil the child. Y'all want to read it? Proverbs. Find it right quick for me. Spare the rod. Look up that phrase. Spare the rod, you spoil the child. Jesus said it over in Hebrew. He said chastisement may not, you may not like it at the moment, but in the end it's going to do you some good. Chastisement means whooping you. God whoop us too, don't he? Anybody ever seen God beat you up pretty good? But you never felt his hand touch you, huh? But something, something, hey, something got you right, didn't it? Come on, y'all ain't got it? What is it? Proverbs 13, 24. Go to it real quick. That's right after the book of Psalm. Y'all still having fun? Are y'all ready for me to shut up? What, what verse? 24? 24 said what? He that spared the rod, what? Y'all stay there. So support it. Find it over in Hebrews. I won't go to Hebrew. Find the word in chastisement for me. Real quick. Uh, 24. He that spares his rod. Do y'all know how many men out there and women? I, 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 and I, I, I've only heard men say, he said, man, I wish my parents had to whoop me sometime. He said, I don't think I would be doing what I'm doing. Do y'all know the reason that a lot of things I didn't do? Because I didn't want to get beat. Whooping. Now, maybe y'all didn't feel that way. And I'm glad mama would whoop me because it kept me from doing things she told me not to do. Amen. Whooping is good. Listen, you don't want a whooping, don't break no rules. Amen. I have yet to whoop my boys because they did what I said. I whoop them because they don't do what I say. Amen. Can't whoop them now because they're they so big. Amen. He said, What? But he, but there is that. Come on. Uh, I'm sorry, but, but he that loveth his chastise, beat, I mean whooping whenever is necessary. Amen? That's all I said, support. It's because time. I mean, go here. What happened to the dinosaurs? No, do that one last. <laughs> do that one last. Yeah, okay. uh, this, this, this is a good one. This is a good, this one. A good one. Yeah, read, read that. That's, that's really good. My other pastor told me I don't need the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. to go into heaven. And is it silly, and it's silly to, listen to a pastor that, full of that's full of themselves? I was told, I was told God, God looks at your heart. And it don't matter if you have the Holy, the Holy it, Ghost. It don't matter if you have the Holy Ghost or if you have the faith of a mm -hmm. mustard seed. That's all you need to get into heaven. I think pastors do not... Do too much. Do too much. A lot, a lot of, of times, time running visitors good. away. Let, Let visitors come. come and worship and feed the word and get fed the word of God. First of all, if I run you away, in my mind, the devil have left the building. I'm gonna say, I'm not, I'm not picking on nobody. But I'm, you need to know how I think. You need to know how I think because I know I ain't told you nothing wrong. Now about getting the Holy Ghost, go to Acts chapter two. I'm, I'm, I'm. Can I, can I be honest, whoever wrote the question, don't get upset. because I'm, I'm about to be real honest now. See, I get sick when I hear a pastor say you don't have to, hold a, have to have the Holy Ghost to go to heaven. When Jesus said if you have not the Spirit of Christ, you are none of here. How are you going to get the Spirit of Christ? By thinking it up? How, how are you going to get it? And then going to say I'm full of myself because I'm telling you what the Bible say? Come on, look at Acts chapter 2, verse 37. So how do you explain this? Man, that should have been the first question, Tommy. <laughs> See, that, that's a sermon question right there. Come on. Verse 37 said what? Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sin, and ye shall receive the... And your pastor said, you don't need it? You don't need it. 
And they were scared of going to hell. And they asked Peter, what are we going to do, man? What are we going to do? He said, repent and be baptized. Every one of y'all, y'all get the Holy Ghost like we got it. Go to Acts chapter 2. Go to verse, verse 1. He said what? Come on, verse 1. Read. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothed in tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the... Peter got the Holy Ghost and told them, go back to 37 and 38. He said, y'all want the Holy Ghost? And then you got somebody going to tell you you don't need it? You don't have to have it? And I'm full of myself? Because I preach it? The Bible preach it? Why can't I preach it? Come on. He said what? Verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off. I'm afar off. That was one of me. He said what? Even as many as the Lord. Go to chapter 10 of the same book. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And somebody going to say, I'm full of myself? Because I tell you, you got to have the old, you come in here and worship God and you a whore and you're going to walk out a whore and come back next Sunday. You a whore, you a dope head, you come back next Sunday. Next Sunday. Ain't nothing changed about you and you really think you're going to go to the same place I'm going and I'm busting my back? I can get high too, but I don't. And you think all of us going to go to the same heaven? Come on, man. Let's get real. That, that, that just somebody ain't thinking straight. For the thing that you, listen, let me ask you this. You going to let some prostitutes you put it like you gonna let some pimp pimp out of your house with your with your nice family in there at the same time? You got pimps working up in there. You got whores and prostitutes and 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 and, and, sissy. and on the other side of the same house in the other bedroom, you got all of your kids that living right. That's how that sound. You think God gonna come down here so we can stop sinning and then let us come up there the way we are and we gonna live on one side of heaven? Living like the devil, and y'all and, and, and y'all gonna be on. I'm gonna be on the good side. You know what? He is gonna do that. It's called heaven and hell. You are gonna be on one side, and I'm gonna be on the other. But we ain't gonna be in the same house together, cause I got a mansion. Holly, y'all got torment. Come on. Now I'm gonna make this quick for you. Verse 45. What had happened? He told Peter, cause the Gentiles had not received the Holy Ghost. So he told Peter to go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you to some Gentiles, and you're gonna tell them what they gotta do to get saved. Now that's just a short version of it. Go back to chapter one. I'm sorry, verse one of chapter ten, and you can get the whole story. But this is what happened when they got down there and talked to him. Verse 45. He said what? And day of the circumcision, that means Jews. Jews went down there with Peter, but God never told them to go. But God let them went so they could have some uh, uh, witnesses. Verse 45 said what? And day of the circumcision which believed was astonished, for as many came with Peter because that on the, on the Gentile were poured out what? Huh. There's another one. Paul said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, we ain't so much heard of no Holy Ghost. He said, well, how was you baptized? They said, Peter baptism. He said, Peter told you to believe on him that should come after him. That is Jesus Christ. He said, and they said, well, we have not. We have, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost? They said, no. He baptized them and they got the Holy Ghost. Come on, verse 46. He said, well, for they, for they heard them. You see, they didn't just come up there and get to shouting. You see, they didn't just say, I confess with the Lord my mouth and believe in my heart and I'm saved. They heard them do what? On the day of Pentecost, what did they hear? Speaking in tongues. So what makes you think you're going to get the Holy Ghost some other kind of way? There ain't but one way to get the Holy Ghost. You got to speak in an unknown language. But somebody say, not all going to speak in tongues. When well, you get confused, Paul was writing to the Corinthians telling them because they was arguing about who had the best gift in the church. Listen, some folk come in the church that can, I'm a preacher. That's my gift. I'm an administrator. That's my gift. I can't sing a note until God touched me. And when he get through touching me, I'm back to my old broken record sound. That ain't my gift. Can I do it? Can I type? Amen. Can I hold the baby? Can I feed the baby a bottle of milk? That ain't my gift. I'm not a mama. You understand? They were arguing about who had the best gift. And Peter, I'm sorry, Paul was telling them, listen, don't y'all be here arguing about just because Tommy can play the drum. Tommy can't preach. Tommy can't usher. 
Sheila can usher, but Sheila can't play no drums. Don't get in here arguing about who got the best gift because we all need one another. Listen, you can put your eyelashes and talk about them, but without them eyelashes, you'll get stuff in your eye all the time. Take your thumb off your hand and watch you have a struggle trying to unscrew a top. So all of the gifts are important. One is no more important than the other one. Amen? And what Paul was telling them, not all of y'all going to speak in tongues, meaning be able to prophesy. Or not all of y'all going to be able to interpret it. Because you don't have the gift of interpreting tongues. So don't think not all of, that wasn't the question. He was telling folks in the church how the gift works in the church. Amen? <coughs> Come on, verse 47, he said what? Can any man forbid water that these which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Peter saying they got the Holy Ghost just like we got it. We got to baptize these folks. We got the, this was, it was a lot of people. It was Cornelius' house. And that day, a person house that was a ruler, not only was his kid, grandkid, cousin, that means all of his slave was completely part of his household. That was, and that boy was rich. So he had a lot of folks getting baptized that day. And they all got the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. So what do you mean that I'm full of myself because I tell you, you, got, you come on to church and praise God and stay in your stooped state if you want to. Do that. And I'm, I'm, I'm not talking to the person that wrote the question. Please don't, don't take it personal, but yet at the same time you should because you need to be corrected. Amen. And listen. Okay, I had to get God permission to ask that question. Go back and ask your pastor, explain these scriptures to you. Better yet, I got another one. Shoot, shoot this one over. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Tell them, and go to chapter 19 of the book of Acts. Go to verse 5. And that's fine. That's fine. But like I say, you are here to be taught. See, you ain't, you ain't ignorant no more because you, you let your pastor told you, and that's cool. I, I got that. But now you read it for yourself. I didn't say it. You read it. Amen. Verse 5 says what? And when they heard, are everybody with me? Chapter 19, the book of Acts, verse 5 says what? They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. How come they doing it in the Bible and I'm crazy because I do it? Ask your pastor that. Say, if they did it in the Bible, why is Pastor Porter crazy for doing it? Don't, that, that's all. I, that's, that's phrase the question just like that. Don't, don't go no deeper. Show him the scriptures. If he or she allow you to, because sometimes these pastors get honorary, they won't let you show them nothing because they know it's there and they don't want to preach it and teach it. But I said, well, pastor, I said, well, you know, we read these scriptures and you go read them and then you go read the next one, then you go read the third one. I said, now, if, if they did that in the Bible, why is Pastor Porter full of himself? And shut up. Don't say nothing else. See what kind of answer you get. Because you read that, right? Anybody here did not read what I just told you to read? I want to make sure you read it so you can go find it. Act chapter 2, the, the first four verses, and the last in verse uh, 37, 38, and 39. Act chapter 10, verse 45, 46, 47, and Act chapter 19. You could go further, but just stick with verse 5 and 6. And ask your pastor. So now, do you think I'm crazy? I just showed you something God said. Do you think I'm crazy? And I'm, I'm not trying to embarrass your pastor. I'm just here showing you what's wrong. Amen. Another question, because I know it's getting late. Why do people stray away from the church? Because they don't trust God. That's a simple answer to that. They stray away because the devil tells them what's better and they believe it. Listen, this life ain't hard. This is a piece of cake. Amen? Folk, folks say living for Christ. Folk, okay. Folk, folks are... Uh, uh, Stray away from God because they say this is a hard life. Man, going to hell is hard. Amen. This ain't nothing. Now wait till you get, do y'all know when you get to hell, you're going to be craving food, you're going to be craving sex, you're going to be craving, whatever you locked on this earth, you're going to be craving it in hell. You know how that, that, that nice piece cobbler your mama like to make? You're going to crave that and you can't get it. You know how you craving that cigarette? 
nicotine, alcoholics. How you, I, I know about being an alcoholic. You crave. I drank for breakfast. I told y'all. Before I brushed my teeth, I had a drink. So I know about the crave. You're going to crave that in hell and you can't solve it. Amen? Is it wrong to only pray to God when you are only in trouble? <laughs> uh, it ain't wrong. You know, but it's like, kind of like begging dad and when you know you need him and when you thought you didn't need him, you didn't talk to him. It, that makes sense? I don't want to call it bad. You shouldn't do it. Because you should pray to God all the time. Don't wait till you're in trouble to talk to him. But he's a wonderful God and he hears you. That's the wonderful thing about him. Now, if you know better, he might not listen to you. Because now you know better. When you don't know better, more than likely he'll listen to you. Because he knows you don't know no better. Remember I say I started out showing by us being ignorant. By us being ignorant, a lot of time God does stuff. But he said, I ain't winking at your ignorance no more. That's for all of us that's here. Remember I told you all of us that's here, we don't get that pass. Y'all done used up that, what that, that, that get out of jail free card. Y'all done used up the get out of jail free card today. When you're, when you're younger and you do sin and then you grow up and change your and change, you still have a chance to go there. Yeah, it's called repenting. Listen, boy, I sinned big time for I, when I was young. Amen. Thank God. Listen, God saved me, gave me baptism in the Holy Ghost. I got baptized in the water, gave me the Holy Ghost, and now he done called me to teach folks how to live right. I'm a perfect example. Yes, all you got to do is get saved. I told you, the purpose of baptism is that all your sin get removed. God said, I don't remember nothing you did. Remember, I started out saying, I remember my sin, but God said, I don't, I don't remember you doing that, John. That's a wonderful God. Yes. Amen? When you turn 18, is it too late to change? As long as you're breathing, it's never too late to change. There's, there's one stipulation to that. If you get the Holy Ghost, meaning you really get the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about baptized and speaking in tongues. The only sin God won't forgive you for, and if you do this, you hell bound, there ain't no way out of it. If you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Blaspheme the Holy Ghost meaning you, in your, in God's face, you tell him he's not real, you ain't stepping about him, however you want to word it. But when you say it to him and it comes from your heart, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Yes, some folks have done it. God will let you live for a long time because he know there ain't no hope for you. Now, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, Long as you're living and breathing, you can still be saved and get right. Everybody understand that? Because you ain't saved or you are saved and you backslid. Because, see, God said he's married to the backslider. What that means, because you hear people, God married to the backslider. What God means is that I'm still married to you, but you've gone out there. Now, if I happen to call the brides, you know how that, 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 that uh, parable, when he go out to get the bride and some of them wasn't ready, he said, now, when I knock on the door and you ain't ready, you're stuck. I ain't coming back to get you. If you're really my bride, why don't you stand at the door and wait for your husband to call you? Now, if you feel like you can run around out here and the rapture come and you don't make it, that's when he divorces you. But until then, he does not divorce you. Now, do you want to take that chance? Because the rapture may not come. You may just die. That's your personal rapture. Because once you die, you don't get another shot at this. So if you're going to get saved and live holy, do it right. And do it right. In other words, do it right now and do it right. Don't, don't play with God. Amen. That's why I was telling y'all about the mercy. You don't know when that mercy going to show up. Amen. Does God judge you of who you are or what you do? Yes, he does. God does. I don't. God judge you. I'm going to close with a scripture, so get it for me. So when we go, I want to go to... Um, uh, Revelation where he talking about he opened the books. He opened the book and he opened the book. I'm going to show y'all he, how he going to judge you. Amen. Um, if you have a heart but sin can if you have a heart but sin yeah, can you go to hell? If you have a heart I'm not quite sure what you mean by that but uh, in other words The Bible tells us the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all who can know it. So don't think, get off that kick about your heart because you don't know your heart. Everybody in here kill somebody. Don't tell me you won't, you will. 
Let me put you in the right position with the right weapon and watch you do it. It's, it's in you to do it. Now, the thing is you stay out of the way so you don't let it happen to you. Amen? Because ain't nobody going to sit in here and watch their mama get raped and got a gun in their hand. You're going to bust a cap in the person that's doing it. So don't say you won't do it. It's in you to do it. Now, God keep you from getting in no position to do it. Thank God for that. Amen? Because a man will do it in a heartbeat. If a man figure he can't whoop you, he's going to shoot you. That's why we got folks shooting all the time because they can't fight. Amen? But uh, 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 you will commit any sin there is. Don't think you won't. All you got to do, listen, we all are that far from losing our mind. All God got to, listen, we all can snap at any point, And we don't know what will make us snap. Because God determines if you're going to snap or not. Amen? So if you got a heart, can God forgive you? Of course. That's, that's, his, that's why he died on the cross. I got you, man. I, I got him. It's, that's why God died on the cross, to forgive us of our sin. And, and we push it to the side like it ain't nothing. Don't you know if, if God was to mock iniquity, we all would be dead, including me. But God is merciful. He loves us. He's teaching us and preaching us and telling us and encouraging us. Get right, get right, get right, get right, get right. And people don't want to listen. Listen, today is a good day to listen. What was your question? Oh, okay. Listen, God won't. That's his, Jesus said, I died that all might be saved. But the only way you're going to get saved, you got to come to him like they did in the book of Acts. Peter, what must we do? What must we do? We don't want to go to hell. What happened to the dinosaurs? Is this the last question? <laughs> what happened to the dinosaurs? Is what science said true or did Noah flood made them go to extent? Or did God throw a meteor at the earth? Okay. To answer that, Tommy, you wrote that. <laughs> um, um, uh, now I can answer. Um, um, I just want to. I want a short version of it because otherwise it would take too long. Listen to this. Listen, and y'all listen. Just listen. Listen closely. Okay. In the book of Job, which is right before Psalm, he talks about dinosaurs. So at some point, Job saw the dinosaurs because God referenced the dinosaurs to Job. He called them a Leothal, a Le Levanathals and something else. He said, one can drink up a whole river. That's a dinosaur. Okay, so they did exist. Now, at what point did they disappear off the earth? I'm not going to get in because I really don't know. I could speculate, but, but I prefer not to since I don't know. But they did exist. Listen, that's why... You get the, uh, what you call the people that uh, dig in the ground and look up the fossils? Yeah. See, anthrop uh, uh, anthropologists, they, the dinosaur did exist. That's a given. The bones are there. Now, this is, this is what God did. Can I, can I really share this with y'all and y'all get this without getting off the deep end? Please don't go off the deep end when I give you this, okay? Because I can back it up in the scripture, but it would take all. It would take, for most of y'all that don't know my teaching and preaching, it would take me two or three Bible classes. When God said, I'm going to breathe the breath of life into Adam, God had already made man. But we didn't know him as man as we think of it. It was... You can call him an ape man. You can call him a Neanderthal man. Or I don't care what you call him. Man was already mobile. A dog is mobile, but he does not have the spirit of God. God looked down and chose one man out the group. Or being. Let's just say being because he wasn't a man per se. And he breathed the breath of life into Adam. He became a living soul. See, we've been taught. That God made that one person and bam, there he was. See, that's what the, the anthropologists and all of these other people don't trust us. Because they find bone that look like humans and they know that they were back there about the same time in Adam. He said, and, and these people said, y'all ain't explaining that to me. I'm explaining it to you today. So don't ever forget this. But don't go off the deep end with it. Because I ain't crazy. What God did, God chose one person out of them group of Neanderthal men and breathed the breath of life and he became a living soul and he killed the rest of them off. 
because they didn't serve no purpose no more. Just like a dog. A dog moves around, but a dog ain't got no soul, do they? A monkey moves around, but they don't have a soul. Listen, you don't get a soul until God breathed his spirit into you. When God breathed his spirit into Adam, all of a sudden that flesh became conscious of everything and became intelligent. Because now, see, what, what you got to understand, your soul, what we call soul or your conscience is a very minute part of God, which makes us conscious of God's law because technically that's what it is. It came from God and God put just the amount in us to keep us conscious of him. But we need a good dose. We call that the Holy Ghost. When he really come in and really take over. So when he breathed the breath of life into Adam, he became a living soul. He's always been mobile. But I know folk can, can fight. But see, anthropologists and what they call evolution people, I would love a good discussion with them. Because see, they always say nobody can explain to them how come we find bones that look like humans along with the dinosaur bones and all y'all say God breathed and made man and that was it. No, 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 no. That ain't the, really the way it was. That's because man is ignorant and they don't talk to God and figure out what did God really do. So when he breathed the breath of life into just like I have 17 brothers and sisters. Well, me counting all of us make 17. I'm the only one got the Holy Ghost. He chose me. He reached down and chose me out of all of the rest of them and left the rest of them. They're all dying. They're all dying and going to hell. Any, if any of my brothers and sisters died today, other than me, they all go to hell because they none of them say. Why did God choose? Let's call him Adam now. Why did God choose Adam? God do whatever he want to do. Why did God choose John out of 17 siblings? The biggest dopehead, the biggest alcoholic, the biggest whore. I trust me, my family to tell you, I was the biggest out of all of everything. That's why they still can't believe I'm saved. Almost, what, 29 years later, they don't believe it. Because God chose the worst. Maybe Adam wasn't the worst, huh? He reached down and chose the worst. Look at Paul. Paul was running around killing saints. Ooh, glory, hallelujah. Killing saints. And God told Paul to go and make saints. Look who wrote majority of the New Testament. The man that killed saints. Isn't that amazing? So listen, dinosaurs was there. And other man-formed humans, if we want to call them. Let's call them Neanderthal for the sake of discussion. Because we really don't have a real term we can give them. They were there. But God said, let me choose one to put my spirit in, and I'm going to get rid of it. Now, did he kill the dinosaur? Did he kill all? Now, that is a question that I don't really need to answer to, and it really carries no weight for no purpose. Amen? So don't sweat it. But yes, they were there. Now, if God, watch this. How many of y'all that are saved, think you say, is the only one in your family that's saved? That's God choosing you, the Neanderthal, and bringing you. And making you say, because he, listen, he could have chose my other brothers and sisters, 16 of them. But he chose me. Out of all the people he could have chose, he chose me. Now, do you think I'm going to let him down? I'm not going to let him down for a whole lot of reasons. Number one, I, I don't want to go back to the world. Amen. Now, let's close out with this. Come on, where is it, honey? Revelation, five. Revelation what? Five? five? No, honey. Revelation what? No, it's in the 20s. 2012. Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. Verse 11. Let's start at verse 11. Come on, y'all. Everybody good? Don't worry. We got food. We're going to eat. Everybody know here that visitors eat first. Because y'all are our company. Amen. Visitors eat first. The members, women, the women eat second or the children? Children eat second, the women eat third, the brothers get what's left. Amen? Come on. Verse 11 says what? And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, for whose faith the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. In other words, judgment time. 12 says what? And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books, and the books were opened. What else? And another book, well, oh, he opened up some books. He don't even put a number. And another book, one book was open. Come on, what did he say? Which is the book of, is the book of life. life. Come on, next verse. It says what? 
and the dead was judged out of those books which was written uh, they was written according to their according to their God gonna judge you on what you did I think somebody asked the question he judged you on what you did he judged you on what you did or lack or not doing amen come on verse 13 said what and the sea gave up the dead which was in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which was in them and they were judged every man according to his according to his well much is given much is required he didn't know what to do good and do it to not to him it is sin so is God going to judge you on what you do you betcha he sure is he going to judge you according to your works amen then uh what's the next verse and death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Verse 15. That's it. Read it. If you were not found or will not be found in the book of life, which is one book. Remember, he said he opened the book. One book. That means it ain't a lot of names in there, huh? But when it comes to that other, it's a whole lot of books. He don't even tell you how many. You find yourself. Now I make it even easier for you. If you find yourself at the white throne judgment, you ain't in the book of life. See, when he opened the book of life, I'm going to be standing behind him. Because I, I already know by me being in the book of life, I made it. But see, all of y'all that's not in the book of life. All of y'all that's standing out there looking at him when he opened the book, you're going to hell. Just that simple. I'm going to be standing behind him because the scripture I ain't got time to show. I'm going to be standing behind him. I'm going to be the one grabbing you, throwing you in there. Because we're going to be the one doing it. John, grab, grab that one. That's all we're going to be doing, throwing folks into hell. And there's nothing you can do about it because it's too late. Too late. Too late. Too late. It, listen, at that point, it's too late. And what is he judging you on? Your works. Now look at your life. Think about it. Look at your life. If you die today, let's be real. If you die today, do you really got something that you can say you did good for Jesus Christ? Not for yourself. I ain't talking about how much money you made and how you took care of your family. I'm talking about that you did for Jesus. If you can say no, then you know you're in trouble. Now, I can say yes, but he's still going to judge me because well, much is given. So he's still going to say, well, John, you could have got, you only got 200 people saved. You could have got 500. I could still go to hell. I'm not excluding myself. But at least I got some conscience to say, I know I've been doing something. I put down all of them sins. I put down all of them obstacles. Amen. My biggest struggle is now is, is maintaining what I do. Y'all know what I mean by that? That means continuing to live holy. Am I maintaining holiness? Or am I going back to my old ways when somebody say something cross to me and I'm mad? Am I not, am I holding unforgiving? Am I holding anger against somebody? Amen. So these are the things you have to ask yourself. You have to ask, you have to come to grip and ask yourself. And in your conscience, I don't care who you are, in your conscience, you know if you're doing wrong or right. Now, there was some confusion. No longer. You understand? Today, everybody walks out of here with some, uh, I won't say some, with a high degree of understanding. And you know where you are. But it's up to you to take the next step. Amen? Because God is saying, listen, you ain't no longer ignorant about whatever question you had, you're no longer ignorant about what you thought. He said, you ain't ignorant no more. Now, you can choose to be ignorant, but you're not ignorant. Amen? Uh, uh, come on, altar workers. If, if you want prayer, if you want prayer, if you want to get baptized, I'm not going to pressure you. I'm not going to do no long altar call because my goal is to just clear up confusion, but I don't know who God have pricked and said, I want this right, man. I'm changing today. Listen, 
I tell you, this is the best church. Why? Because you got a pastor that you can access. You can come to me. You can talk to me. I'm not hiding from you. I don't go in my office and lock up where you can't reach to me. Listen, you can reach me. Every member of the church got my cell number. You can call me. I'm not hiding from nobody. And as you can see, I can answer all your questions without any preparation because God is the one that's answering your question, not me. Amen. I'm just the vessel. Amen. So if you want prayer, if you want prayer, if you want prayer, if you want to get baptized, wave your hand. They'll come and get you and take you to the water. Amen. You want to get baptized? Come on. Go baptize them. Get your sin off it. Yeah. You want to get baptized? We got all the clothes. You don't need nothing. Amen. Your life, your life can change today. Amen. No, go that way. You're going the wrong way. Go, go that way. James, wait, he's gone already? Amen. Aaron, go with him. Amen. Anybody else want to? We got clothes for women too. Trust me. We got everything you need. We can cover up your hair, everything. Listen, I'm telling you, today you can walk out of here with all your sin. Why pass up an opportunity like that? Why pass up and I'm, you can get the Holy Ghost just as easy. All you got to do is come up here and believe God. God will fill you with his spirit. Your whole life will never, listen, I, I gave y'all some of my pedigree of what, I, what I've done. That was a very small piece, trust me. I was a bad person. I likened myself to Paul, chief sinner, chief sinner. I didn't kill nobody, not physically. But I've done some bad stuff in my life. And I thank God. Oh, Lord Jesus, I thank God. That he showed me mercy. That's why Paul said that he showed me mercy to get me to where I am today. Amen. Nobody wants prayer. That's, that's fine. Because I know you didn't heard a lot of things. You got to chew on it. Amen. Normally we have night service. We won't have it this Sunday. But next week, if you want to come back, we start at 1030. Normally I'm through about 1215, not 115. Amen. So I don't want you to think that we go two hours all the time because it doesn't take that long to preach. Amen. And we always have night service. Amen. So you're more than welcome. You're welcome. Now, all of my visitors, can y'all do me one favor? Take out your cell phone. All visitors, take out your cell phone. Go to your, go to your um, text message, like you're going to text a message. Let me show you something real quick. Get your cell phone. Normally we don't use cell phones in the trade, but we make an exception because I want to show you all something. Go to your text message and type in the, back, the number you see on the back of these shirts, 55,000. Put that in the phone number, like if that's the phone number. Use that as the phone number. 55,000. That's the number you're dialing. Everybody got it? Put 55,000 with the phone number and put in, in the message, type the word Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. -S. It doesn't have to be capitalized. And hit sin. Did you get a message back? Jesus telling you something. Anytime for the rest of your life, that you want to hear something or encouraging words, do that. Save that in your, in your contact and just type Jesus and Jesus will respond to you every time. Somebody say, somebody say that's Jesus. Who you think it is? It's Jesus. Because it's going to always say what you need to hear. Every single time. A amen? You got an announcement or something? Oh. All right, let us stand. Let us stand. I pray that the words that you, as the scriptures say, that you're hiding in your heart. And, and please, visitors, the food is for you all. So please stay and eat with us. I would like to be able to hug and shake every hand that have never hugged or shook my hand. So please don't run off. Amen. Everybody with me? Everybody standing. We're going to dismiss. And then we're going to let you all dine with us, and we're going to sit around and fellowship and have some fun this afternoon. Amen? Have some more fun, shall I say. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, 
We say thank you, Lord, for being so, so good to us on this day. Thank you for all removing cobwebs, confusion, distraction, and hindering. Thank you, Lord God, for opening up our mind and our heart and helping us to see things a little bit better. We thank you, Father, because you didn't have to do it. That's your grace. Mm, glory, hallelujah. That's your grace. And we thank you, Lord, because you are wonderful. And we praise your name. Father, bless every visitor, everyone that was here today. Lord God, strengthen them. Help them to see, Lord God, hallelujah, who you are and what you are capable of. Bless them in their spirit, Lord God. Bless them in their mind. And Father, let them know they can come and talk to the pastor anytime. Hallelujah. We're here. That's our job is to help them do better that you might get the glory, Lord. And we thank Thank you, Father, right now. Bless us all as we continue to serve you and obey you. We ask your blessings upon the food this afternoon that you take out the impurities and make it healthy for our body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.